did you have uh, did you have fun? Uh, I did. Yeah, I, I, really, and... I really sucked though, man. I was bad. <laughs> and then did you get some Viking food after that? Was uh, that we the... had amazing food? We had partridge. It was so good. Oh, nice. I wanted to, and I, and then I saw the guy who, who who did the cooking at the premiere last night, and I was asking him, I'd love some sandwiches or something like that. <laughs> but he was cool. It, I can I can apparently do the throat singing that whoa, whoa. like I was able to kind of. Oh, you you try that? Like, yeah, I was able to do it. This is probably one of the best movies I've seen in the last couple of years. I mean, wow, it, was, it was exactly my taste in movies, right? And it was just this immersive experience, and I was literally, like, edge of my seat, flipping out the entire... Like, I'm going to see it a couple more times at theaters. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All that to say, I read that you've wanted to make a Viking movie for a really long time. And I was just wondering if you could tell me what it is that made, you know, Robert Eggers such a perfect choice to do it. Because, I mean, I've seen his other movies, and I love his other movies. But there was nothing in them that made me think that, wow, he can make this epic, you know, Viking film. And I was wondering what went, went into to, to you two working together on this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'd been um, uh, nursing this uh, idea, this dream for, for quite a while. And um, but couldn't quite decide. I, I teamed up with Lars Knudsen, who ultimately uh, uh, we produced The Northman with. Mm -hmm. um, about 10 years ago, and we started talking about, um, uh, so if we can, is it, can we make a big epic Viking adventure, but um, still hold on to the essence of the old uh, Edda sagas, the, the, the Icelandic sagas, the, the, the poetry, the, um, that uh, laconic language, the, 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 the dry characters, the kind of, um, the, the, just kind of the harshness of that. <clears throat> and we were going through the old sagas and, and, and also looking at some um, historical characters uh, that could have been fun to make potentially base a movie on. Um, but it wasn't until I, I met Rob um, unrelated to this uh, five years ago. Uh, and it was just uh, after I, the, the Witch had come out. And um, I was just really impressed by uh, what he could do on a very, very limited budget um, on that movie, how immersive it felt, how rich it felt, the, just the texture, the, the everything felt so authentic. So, but I wasn't meeting up with Rob. I wasn't thinking, oh, um, he could make a great Viking movie. Um, again, we were meeting about something else, um, but he had, it was, uh, it was fate because yeah. he had just, returned from Iceland and um, had fallen in love with the culture and the people and, and, and um, uh, had, had gone, gone into Norse mythology, reading about the old sagas. So he was, when we met up, um, we started talking about Iceland and Scandinavia and, and, um, and uh, Vikings and Norse mythology. And um, I was surprised to, to, to he, he knew so, he already knew so much about that world, that culture, and was truly fascinated by it. Um, so after that, I thought, well, I've seen what he can do with a limited budget on The Witch, but he's also so he's and he's clearly an, an incredible filmmaker. Um, but he also gets the mindset of, of the Vikings, of the uh, and, and uh, so I call I, I talked to Lars Knudsen. And we both agreed that he, he would be the, the absolute perfect director for this. And uh, we were thrilled when he when Rob said that he wanted to jump in and do this together. So that was kind of the, 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 the starting point for what ultimately became The Northman. Um, and then I, I didn't write the screenplay. I, it was Rob and Sean, um, Icelandic uh, poet and author, and um, they teamed up and... and, and to, to start working on the screenplay. So I wasn't part of that process, but it was a treat to be involved throughout the screenwriting process because that's something you're not always privy to as an actor. You, <laughs> you get sent the script and it's like, all right, you're gonna shoot this in two months. You, you wanna go do it. <laughs> but to, to be there along the way and to have conversations with Rob and Sean about Amlet's journey, about um, the, the movie uh, was, uh, 
learned a lot from that, and it was really, really interesting. Well, I think you could kind of tell with the movie, though, that it was built around you. Like, like it, it was, I was telling Robert this, that I've never, you know, I could not imagine anybody else playing the part. Like, it just felt like it was, like you were born to do it in some ways, you know, and, and, and that was, that was, that was a real treat. And you also said something about, you know, being immersive. Um, so I want to ask you about the Berserker raid at the beginning, which is an amazing shot where you kind of have like this trance come over you. And then it seems to me like it was like almost like one take. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about shooting that because it seems like it would be almost impossible to shoot that scene. Like I can't imagine what must have gone into that. Yeah, it felt uh, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, 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 um, what got us through it was the, the, uh, at least for myself, the ex I was so excited to, it's a really big set piece yeah. uh, with so many different moving components in order to make that work. Uh, stuntmen, actors, extras, horses, chickens. It's like a <laughs> lot. Um, it's, you know, Climbing walls, jumping. It's just uh, throwing men off horses. and It's just a lot. Um, so to do that with no coverage, one long take, is uh, insane. Um, but... I got excited about the idea of like, well, if we can pull this off, it, it will hopefully, there's an opportunity that, that maybe it'll feel <clears throat> slightly different to the audience. Even if you don't know the nuts and bolts of filmmaking and um, uh, maybe it will feel a bit more immersive and also maybe a bit different because again, most uh, action scenes and set pieces will have um, a gazillion cuts and yeah. it's a way of experiencing it that is, is maybe a bit different. So um, with that uh, enthusiasm, we all kind of approached it and said like, well, let's at least give it a shot. Let's see if we can pull this off. Um, and it, it meant that we months before had to start planning that sequence. Well, I've never seen anything like it. Like, really, I did. Truly, it was one of oh, the kind. Right. Yeah, and a, an incredible. Then it was worth it. It was worth yeah. it. But it was yeah. So it was months of, of working with the stunt team, choreographing the fa the the whole sequence, all the fights, and um, and all working closely with with Jaron, the cinematographer, and his team because it's they are moving, we're moving. So and it, it, you have to time everything perfectly. So that was quite a challenge. But again. Uh, um, thrilling and and having done all that research when we started shooting it, uh, the adrenaline is just flowing and it's a, it's an amazing feeling um, to not have to stop start all day like you do normally when you shoot a night a fight scene. Uh, we could just flow through the whole thing and we're moving through a village that looks exactly like that village would have looked like a thousand years ago. The attention to detail detail was remarkable. So. Um, and it was uh, an, an incredible experience as an actor to get to move through that and do the whole thing uh, from, from, from the beginning to the end. Can you talk a bit about your physical transformation? Because, I mean, I've, I've seen you in you know, Tarzan and movies and stuff, and you, and you looked incredible in those films, but it looked like the, the, the shape that you were in for, for, the, Nor for the Northmen was, was different because you had all that extra bulk but also super lean. And I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about that because it, um, was, it was intimidating. Yeah, I... I I just wanted to, uh, uh, the character's name is Björn Ulfur, which means bear wolf. Mm -hmm. he, uh, it's in the name. He, <laughs> I had to look a bit more like a, um, a hybrid of a bear and a wolf. Um, he, um, that's also in, the, in, in the, the, the transformation when he goes from man to beast before the, the raid, when he goes into the berserker mindset. Yeah. Um, it, it was important to find that. Uh, more animalistic side and let it out. So I just, um, I'm naturally qu quite lean. So I wanted to just put on some, some, some weight and, and just be heavier. Um, uh, so, so yeah, we started about five months before shooting the movie when um, just, uh, uh, just eating a lot and, uh, and, and, uh, and carrying big rocks back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that feels like that would be a Viking workout, right? <laughs> yeah, we try to incorporate a lot of the yeah. stuff that Amleth does on the farm, a lot of the, the yeah. labor he has to do on the farm. We, we try to incorporate a lot of that into the training uh, so it would be practical stuff. Um, 
So it looked a bit weird at the gym when we were carrying boulders around and, and dragging weird things down the street. There was this one scene in the movie that blew me away, though. Uh, you your guys are playing this, like, Viking sport with, like, the ball. And I thought that was one of the best, like, scenes I've seen in a movie in a long time. <laughs> Just maybe tell me a bit about that sport. What was it? was, like, hit ball or something? That's what, what, what it translated to. It's what Robert was telling me. Yeah, it's called crazy. Knutlaker uh, <laughs> is the name of it. And, and again, like everything in the movie and everything Robert does, it's 100% historically accurate. He's done tr a tremendous amount of research with uh, Neil Price, a uh, Viking historian and, 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 and other um, consultants in, in, in trying to depict it in a way that was as accurate as possible down to like, what kind of leather should the ball be in and how, <laughs> how would it be stitched, all that kind of stuff. And, um, it's a fun, exciting sequence. It was a bit of a nightmare to shoot it. We shot it in a very remote area. There was like flash flooding one day where the whole set just like washed off the mountain. Uh, and um, and uh, again, a, a long, tough sequence to shoot. Um, I had to go up against Hafthor from Iceland, who is, he played the, the mountain on, on Game of Thrones. <laughs> And you're a big guy too, so and they, but they were finding guys that were even bigger than you. Well, which I was they cool. literally gave me the strongest man on the planet to fight. <laughs> <laughs> it was not fair. Uh, so I was in a lot of. He, and he's a lovely, lovely guy. Really, really a, a gentle so. giant. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, thankfully. But yeah. but even so, him just like tapping me on the shoulder, and I would like, go flying. So. <laughs> It was, uh, I was bruised, but very happy after that week. It was, it was, it was a ex really exciting sequence to shoot. So I said before, this was one of the best movies I've seen in a few years, and it is. And a lot of people talk about, you know, the death of cinema, the rise of streaming and stuff. But this gives me hope because I haven't seen a big, immersive epic like this on the big screen in a long time. But I just wondered, as, as a guy who also produced the movie, was it difficult to, to, to be able to launch something like this on the scale that it needed to be at? I'm eternally grateful to uh, Regency and to Focus um, that they gave Robert and, and, and us a shot to do this. The fact that it's um, uh, a, a very much an auteur filmmaker who's done two smaller budget, very intimate character driven pieces that they gave him an opportunity on this canvas to do something so big and epic uh, um, and done, done in a way and not trying to micromanage him or control him to let him shoot it with one camera on film um exactly the way he wants and or uh, it, it was a long tough expensive shoot but they were as committed as we were to 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 to, to rob's vision um and i it it, it was uh, incredibly rewarding and, and exciting to work on a massive big budget movie um but that wasn't that was um, original content. That it wasn't um, a, a remake or a, a spinoff or a sequel or uh, um, and again by 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 a true uh, truly visionary filmmaker was it, it was such a such a such a treat. Well, another thing that's interesting too is that it's it's relatively fresh ground, right? That it's a Viking movie because you don't because you don't see like there's not a ton of great Viking movies. I mean, your brother's on a great Viking show, uh, but you don't see like a ton of great Viking movies. So I think you guys that was the whole shot. reason I wanted to make yeah. a movie in the first place. I I woke up one day ten years ago. I was like, hey, wait a minute, why is there no? There's never been like uh, traveling the world as a Swede. You hear a lot. You. you People seem quite fascinated by Vikings and Norse mythology and uh, the culture, uh, uh, and I realized I I'd seen the old Kirk Douglas movies from the '50s or a couple yeah. of Viking movies from 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 back in the day, but I've never seen a big epic, historically accurate um, depiction of, of of Vikings on the big screen. Um, so that was kind of the kernel, the the beginning of of, of this journey, where I was like, well. Let's just go and make one. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I hope it makes a billion dollars. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you very I, much. I, I, we're really excited about it on Joe Blow. So. Oh, thank you. Fate has no mercy.
I cannot escape my fate. 